So I just got done watching Netflix's new movie, Outlaw Kings, which is actually a sequel to Braveheart. I wasn't aware of that until as of recently, actually. This movie is directed by the same guy that did Hell or High Water with Chris Pine as well, and uh, they seem to be really good together because they keep making good movies. This movie picks up where Chris Pine plays Robert the Bruce, and he has a peace treaty with the King of England, and in turn, you know, the King of England gives him one of his daughters to marry, and upon returning to his castle, he finds out that William Wallace, who was played by Mel Gibson in Braveheart, his arm is hanging from a pole there, and they pretty much declare him like a traitor and like a rebel, an outlaw, so he was killed and tortured and beaten, and they, they hung his arm to, you know, show like this is what happened to rebels, and Robert the Bruce takes this as offensive, like they were friends or whatever, so he breaks the peace treaty and pretty much wages war against the King of England and wants to take back independence for Scotland. Uh, he does this all with a very small army, one including Aaron Taylor Johnson, which is like this lone knight who swears his loyalty and swears to defend Robert the Bruce because uh, one of the knights of the King of England killed uh, his family and he wants to help Robert the Bruce get revenge on them. This movie is actually really, really fucking good. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. Um, it actually met my expectations. It didn't go above them, it just met them, which isn't a bad thing, but who doesn't like to leave a theater or finish watching a movie going, wow, that was better than I thought. This is a Netflix movie. It doesn't have the biggest budget, you know, one that a Hollywood movie would have. So, although the battles are excellent and well done, and there's a couple of them that are done with one-shots that were really impressive, uh, the blood looks a little fake and cheesy, and it looks CGI'd. Like, you can clearly tell it's not actually there, and it's just added in after the fact. But the acting's all top-notch. Chris Pine does an excellent job. Um, aside from him, everyone does a really good job, except, honestly, Aaron Taylor Johnson. His performance is a little, like, too extreme. Like, he's really, uh, like, overacting here. He was kind of, like... Just really crazy and he was playing like you know he's getting revenge every time he's like getting closer towards getting his revenge he's, he's getting crazy he's, he's screaming at the camera and he's doing all these battle cries every time he kills somebody and I get why he was doing it you know he was very passionate about this battle that they were forming and this army that they were building and every time he killed these people he was one step closer to getting his revenge or whatever but like it was just too much it was too cheesy uh, I don't know he was really honing it in and just Kind of pulled me out of the experience a little bit and again i get why they did it i just i think he went a little too over the top but besides him everyone did a great fucking job the movie wasn't slow at all uh me and my girlfriend watched this and she usually can't stand like medieval movies and stuff with a lot of talking but uh she was really intrigued because this whole movie like you know in the downtime it was just really horrible shit happening to robert the bruce like, a lot of things didn't go his way and a lot of people he cared about died to protect him and protect his whereabouts so that you know the opposing army couldn't find him and kill him before he's able to build enough of an alliance to fight back. And eventually he does, and there's a big epic battle on the beach at the end, and it's really well done. They have these cool, like, pits that they make with spikes sticking out, and it's like, they build it, like, all around them, so the, the opposing army can't get close enough to them to, like, swarm them, because it was, like, 500 men on Robert the Bruce's side versus, like, 3,000 on the opposing side, so those pits kind of stopped them all from charging full force, and gave them a chance to like pick them off one by one as the enemies were jumping over the pit and stuff. It was all really well done. The battle scenes were cool. And as a sequel to Braveheart, I don't think it lives up to Braveheart. Braveheart's message was a lot stronger. And I think that the ending break to Braveheart was a lot more satisfying. This one kind of just ends. He So essentially, for anyone that knows the story, he wins the battle on this day and the opposing team retreats. Then you kind of just get closure by subtitles that come up at the bottom that explain what happened over like the next like 30 years you find out that you know robert the bruce ruled for another like 30 years until he died but you know this battle wasn't the end of his story there was still more battle he partook in you know there was still more to his story it's just you know at two hours long they kind of had to end it and wrap it all up in you know like little subtitles and text at the bottom but i would have liked to see more i keep doing this for the last couple of movies that have come out but I would have rather see this as an HBO miniseries than a movie because there's just so much story to tell and not enough time to do it in a movie or even make two movies or three movies. Fuck it. This movie is totally worthy to tell. I think that if they had the resources and more time to tell Robert the Bruce's full story, it could be just as good, if not better, than Braveheart. Anyway, I really like this movie. Uh, it wasn't slow. I thought the pacing was excellent. Apparently, there's like some three hour long cut out there that was released at a festival to you know show to the fans but 
it dragged so they you know chopped it up a little bit and edited it and shortened it down to just about two hours but i think that it works nicely i haven't seen the other one but i think anything other than what i've seen would have been a little too much i think that whatever they did worked perfectly so the pacing was great the acting was great the battle scenes were great the cgi was a little bad aaron taylor johnson's performance was a little weak to me or a little too much and I thought that the movie could have been a little bit longer. It kind of doesn't leave you on a cliffhanger, but it doesn't really leave you all that satisfied either. So I'm gonna give this movie an eight. It's definitely worth a watch. This is another big win for Netflix. You know, this is another step forward for them showing that they have the capability of standing tall with movies that you see in Hollywood. Uh, this makes me more excited now to see what more they have lying ahead. This is a Netflix original. It's not like they bought it from like a studio that thought that this movie was gonna bomb. Anyway. Thanks for watching, and let's talk about it in the comments down below. Are you excited to see this movie? Has my review changed your opinion about this movie? What do you think about Netflix becoming the giant that they are? And did you want a Braveheart sequel? Like, did anyone actually care about this source material? Let's talk about it down below, and as always, I'll catch you next time.